Hi, and here we go with 5.2 phases of matter. All right, so there's three phases of matter. Solid, and we use the little s for solid. Liquid, we use the little l for liquid. And gas, we use this little g for gas. And actually, there is a fourth one, plasma, which is a superheated gas. But that's not going to be important for us in chemistry, so we're not going to do anything further with it. All right, so first let's take a look at solid. And when we talk about each of the phases of matter, we're going to talk about shape. And for solid, solids have a definite or fixed shape. That just means the shape doesn't change. The next is volume. And it has a definite or fixed volume. Particle movement. In a solid, the particles vibrate in place, or the particles wiggle, or a particle wiggles. Density, the distance between particles, has to do with how tightly packed the particles are. And solids have generally a high density, which is a small distance between the particles. Next are our intermolecular forces, IMFs. And solids tend to have strong intermolecular forces because that's what is actually keeping the particles together. And for each, we're going to look at a particle diagram. And here we can see the particles in the solid packed nice and tightly, rigid. There's no room for any of them to move. All right, next liquid so liquid the shape there's no definite shape so it takes the shape of its container you have to be able to know both of these volume however is fixed and it doesn't really seem that way until you really think about it could you possibly squeeze two liters of soda into a one liter bottle you know, no matter how hard you push, you're never going to pack or compress the liquid. So it has a fixed volume. Particle movement. The, here, the particles vibrate around moving points. So instead of like a solid vibrating around a fixed point, here they vibrate around a moving point where we say that they can flow past one another. Density. All right, it's got a relatively high density with a small distance between particles which is going to lead to stronger intermolecular forces, right? It's weaker than a solid in general, but still fairly strong. By the way, when we talk about intermolecular forces, we're generally just talking about room temp or somewhere between room temperature and standard temperature and pressure. Finally, the particle diagram. Right, we can see these look like they've been jumbled around a little bit. Some of them are a little further apart. Right. Some of them are just kind of packed on top of one another. But they're not packed as tightly as the solid. All right. And last but not least, gas. Gas has no definite shape like a liquid. It takes the shape of its container. Gas, however, has no definite volume. It expands to fill its container, which also means it can be compressed. You know, anytime you see like a uh, helium tank or an uh, air tank that's used in scuba, the air has been compressed to fit inside the container. And when you let the air out or let the gas out, it expands to fill the new container, which is just the atmosphere usually. Particle movement. Very free to move. And gas particles bounce off the surface of the container very low density. There's usually a great distance between particles. The intermolecular forces are weak. And if we look at the particle diagram here, it'll kind of make sense, right? When these particles are so far apart, the forces between them are going to be weak because they're too far apart to attract or repel from one another. Uh, and we can see how spread apart they are. So that's just showing how they have a low density. All right, so to sum it up, this is an important table. Make sure you have this written down. 
Okay, you need to be able to pretty much on a moment's notice be able to fill these out. So solid, definite shape, definite volume, particle movement, they just vibrate, high density, strong intermolecular forces. Liquids, no definite shape, but a definite volume. They move medium high to high density and eh, not really strong, but kind of strong intermolecular forces. Gas, no definite shape, no definite volume, free to move like crazy, low density, and very weak intermolecular forces. All right, question time. So, very easy. All right, we're talking bromine, increasing distance between bromine molecules. So, you're going from least distance between the mo molecules to most between the molecules. And a gas in a closed container. All right, that brings us to the end. See you guys at school.